What up my friends? We have arrived here at Epcot. Today we are only spending a couple hours at Epcot and the name of the game today is food. We're doing Festival of the Arts. I went on Instagram last night. I asked the peoples to pick for us what we were going to eat because we are the most indecisive people ever. So I did a little this or that game to pick between some options that we were considering and I'm excited for what everybody chose. So you're gonna see that. And then um, later on today, we're gonna be going to the Magic Kingdom. So right now we're just gonna focus on Festival of the Arts. By the time you see this video, Festival of the Arts will have ended, but it'll give you a little peek into the different offerings they have when they have these festivals. I love when Epcot does these festivals because the food options are always on point. And we're gonna try some new things we haven't tried today. So I'm very excited about that. And I hope you guys enjoy. Walt Disney World's Epcot hosts several festivals throughout the year, and the first for 2024 was the International Festival of the Arts. This ran from January 12th through February 19th of this year. This festival focuses on culinary, visual, and performing arts. When you attend the event, you can get a festival passport, which will give you details you'll need when you're walking through. Most importantly, they share the menu inside. At the festival, in addition to all the food there is to try, they also have several art booths set up with artists of many different mediums. On some days, the artists will even work live on pieces and you can watch it go down, and they have scheduled signings, so if you wanna grab a piece of art and have them sign, you can check the schedule for that. They have an amazing chalk art on display and a section for kids to participate in the chalk art fun. There's also a mural set up that you can contribute to in a paint by number fashion. We had a great time checking out the art as we were walking around, but our primary focus was for the food. We decided to try out six different menu items at the festival, and we started with the most important category there is, caffeine. Instagram friends voted, and it was a tight race, but the pistachio palette cold brew won at Joffrey's. I felt this was a really unique coffee. It had a good balance of sweetness. I gave it an eight out of 10, John gave it a six, but I will say pistachio isn't really one of his top favorite flavors. So a six actually is pretty strong for him. Next, we went over to El Artista Abriento and got the Tostada de Langosta. This one was unexpected for me. I'm originally from Southeast Massachusetts, so I'm used to lobster rolls, which I feel like have a hint of sweetness to them. So that's kind of what I came in expecting. This had a completely different flavor profile. And even though hot sauce isn't something I usually gravitate towards, I think it took this to the next level. It was an eight out of 10 for me. John is a broken New Englander and doesn't like lobster. So I carried the team for votes on this one. Then we headed over to the Painted Panda to grab a char siu pork bun. I know we just talked about being from New England and this one was another nostalgic throwback for us because it reminded us of New England Chinese food. We absolutely loved the sauce that they used for this. For me, it was an eight and for John, a seven. I did also grab some live feedback from him when we were at the park. You know what this tastes like? Manapua? No. Oh. New England, um, Pork strips? Yep. Literally what it tastes like. Is that good or bad? I know the answer. That's nostalgic. <laughs> that good. What would you give it out of a 10? Back to business. Back to business. Um, for Epcot food, I would say this is like a seven. Seven out of 10? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Next up, we headed over to the Germany area for pastoral palette for the beef short rib. This one unfortunately fell flat for us and I'll let past Kate and John tell you why. Okay. 
This is from the Pastoral Palette, mm -hmm. and this is the short rib, right outside of Germany. Mm. Do a little potato. You gotta try the tomato, since your girl doesn't like tomato. You wanna talk about the pork, or no? Short rib? Let's talk about it, man. I feel like it's missing something. Salt, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Same with the potato. Although, I haven't even tried it yet, and I just had a feeling that it was missing potato, salt. potato, I mean, let's be honest. Can't compete with Kate's potato. Oh, that's true. So, that I is mean, true. All potatoes are just below. Are that. never gonna be great, yeah. Alright. Uh, they're very warm. Very warm? Yeah. But they're full of flavor. Really? What would you give this out of a 10? Maybe like a 5. A 5? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get some of the glaze because the glaze is the part I would like the most. Mmm. Yeah, it's definitely missing salt. It's definitely the problem here. I don't love this. The glaze doesn't taste like balsamic glaze. The, um, the meat itself is super tender. Let me try this broccolini here. The broccoli is super bitter. So I don't think like the balsamic glaze is the best idea for that. Okay. Reading. That's it. I'm I'm gonna sound negative and I don't want to because I'm not a negative person, but I think this is like a three or four for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not a tomato fan, but I'll try the tomato. That's the only thing that gave it a five for me. Was the tomato? Yeah. I don't like tomato. Yeah. And I like that. Okay, yeah, I can see. I'm gonna go with the solid four then solid instead four. of a three. The tomato, surprisingly, of all things, it does say on the on the sign that it's farm to table, so that's probably why the tomato is making a difference. But the broccoli is super bitter, which is weird because I'm a huge like broccoli is my favorite vegetable. So, four out of ten. Four out of ten. a quick run into the baby care center to refresh our three stroller passengers, we headed over to Deco Delights. We didn't ask Instagram for feedback on this one because it was a no-brainer for us. It was a Neapolitan dessert trio. It was good. We felt like it was light and not sickly sweet. I like that it wasn't overly sugary because the rest of our choices were pretty decadent, so I don't think we could have handled a super rich dessert. It didn't completely wow us, but it was a solid 7 out of 10 for both of us. Our last dish was at Gourmet Landscapes and it was the roasted bone marrow. I hate to end this on a negative note because we were so excited to try this one, but we were very let down. I don't know how they're charging $10 for this dish. It felt like an onion sauce with some mushrooms in it. It was a two for Kate and a 1.5 for John. Okay, this is the bone marrow. Thoughts on the bread to start? Bread? Cool. Cool. Okay. Love it. I like it. It's crunchy. I can see me in your sunglasses. Hi, me. Hi. Underwhelming. It's like mostly onion. Yeah, very oniony. Underwhelming. Like, very underwhelming. All right, that wraps it up for us today at Epcot's Festival of the Arts. I think this festival will be definitely done by the time we come back again. Had a great time, great food, great ambiance, great everything. Have a magical day, everyone.